and he was sitting there just, we were writing material, and he was just drinking tea, just f***ing hammering tea. And he was like, yeah, I gotta cut back on the tea. Drinking too much tea, mate. It's like, it's like a bad habit, you know, I'm just sat there, you know, it's like a safety thing. As I'm like shoving Danish cakes in my face. Hmm? Uh, Peron says, hey yo, have you sent Russell home? Yeah, well actually I sent him to Germany. Sorry. They can have him. We don't need him anymore. So I sent him off to Germany, just so he can see what it was like to be in a shitty country compared to Denmark. Oh shit, shots fired. Hoygor says, have you made a video with him? Yes, I did made make I I did that made that. I did made make a video with uh, Russell. I had him on the stream Monday. Russell was on the stream Monday. We were planning uh, on him coming in Sunday, and then we were supposed to do a show in Aarhus, a stand up work in progress, where I was the warm up. I was supposed to do a show on uh, Thursday with him and Friday, and then two shows in Odense Saturday and two shows yesterday, Sunday, and then he came in on Monday, he got on the stream! We got Russell Hamad on the stream. And we played Surgeon Simulator. What operations are we gonna do? Can I, Bugsy Circumcision, let's get down to the money. How do I get in? Use a hammer, there's a hammer! Which was hilarious, his wife's a doctor, and I think it's good that he's not the one taking over, cause uh, he, you know, he'd be a hilarious doctor. So he d delivered the news in a funny way. So I've been performing, but then because Russell is such a workaholic and I'm a workaholic as well, I love, I love working. He was like, let's do some open mics. Let's set up some shows. So I got him on the stream on Monday. Tuesday, we did an open mic. We were writing all day and uh, we did an open mic. Wednesday, also in English. And then we went to Austin, the two shows, and we've just been writing, doing all of this uh, stuff, all of this stuff. I'm knackered today. <laughs> For the last seven days, I've just been writing and trying to keep up with Russell. And it's just next level, man. That guy works, or I thought I worked a lot. He's just unstoppable. And he's all about, okay, it's like intermittent fasting. I eat for eight hours, I don't, uh, like, and I only eat in an eight, eight hour interval. Don't eat for 16 hours. Don't eat gluten. Don't uh, drink milk. I'm a vegetarian, a vegan five days a week. And uh, just sleep in, work, work, work. He's just, and I uh, went to the gym, yeah, you know, and just writes and remembers everything. He's a goddamn machine. And I'm there, hi, hi. Sometimes I play Fortnite on my Twitch stream, and we have some. Followers and nice people who sometimes donate a little. It's very nice. We play a lot of video games and have fun. So it's just god damn it that guy is, is next level. <laughs> it's been kind of insane. Yeah, I got home yesterday at after the show we drove. We did two shows yesterday. And then I drove back to I drove him to the airport to the hotel. And I just got a bunch of tips about how to perform in arenas, which is very useful. Like the level at which that guy works. He's always like, yeah, no, you know, then I went to see uh, Dave Chappelle. So I was talking to my good friend John Oliver the other day. That's the thing about performing with uh, Louis C.K. Is you can just like, okay, uh, do, you, do you know there are many good other comedians in Denmark? I did a show in Randers once that went very well also. Yeah, that's the thing about Manchester Arena, right? It's a 16,000 seater. And you just gotta get, you know, you just gotta get up there. Just one sentence at a time, make sure you deliver it. And you're like, yeah, good tip. I'll think about that the next time I perform for 16,000 people. But then again, let's see what the stream, where the stream ends up. Huh? Let's build this family. Yeah, Perun says, being so healthy can't be a healthy way to live. That's the way I felt. <laughs> he seriously told me one day, because we were writing. We are out, of, it's just get up, work out, and he was sitting there just, we were writing material, and he was just drinking tea, just hammering tea. And he was like, yeah, I gotta cut back on the tea. Drinking too much tea, mate. It's like, it's like a bad habit, you know, I'm just sat there, you know, it's like a safety thing. I'm like, I think it's okay, Russell. I think you drinking maybe two cups of English breakfast tea, it'll be okay. You'll be fine. 
Trust me. As I'm like shoving Danish cakes in my face. Hmm? Oh yeah. Yeah, too much tea. Mr. No gluten, no milk. Work 18 hours a day. Perform two hours every night. I love him. Love him to bits. He's so inspired. Inspir inspir inspiring? Inspirational. He's like those Instagram quotes where it's like, just get it. But he doesn't post that. He actually lives it. Uh, Soapy Potato says, uh, is Russell as nice a person as he seems? I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in Bremen in a week. Yeah, he's amazing. He's such a good guy. He's one of my good friends and I'm proud to call him a friend because like I just learn. It's like when Chris Rock started, he actually hung out a bunch with Eddie Murphy and he talked about not only seeing the way he worked on material, but also seeing how someone at that level works. It, it really makes sense. Because you, you, you think you have this idea of, okay, I know how to do stand-up and, and uh, yeah, I, I could probably get to a bigger level. And then as I progressed personally from the open mic scene to the bigger scene, I kind of realized, oh, this is like a different way of working. There's no time for, you have to kind of take stuff out of your day, of your life. So you prioritize like less partying. There's just less stuff you can do. Like you really have to focus on seeing your friends and your family. It's a big puzzle, it's impossible to weigh it out, but then you realize, oh fuck, I'm working really hard to get get to this level. And then you see how Russell work, and you're like, oh, I guess I have to be, I have to have an IQ of 170, remember everything, and be obsessed with stand-up, and be able to remember two hours of material that I basically rehearse in one hour before the show. And I know every single segue, and I just work eight days a week, and work out ne behind, like next to that, and it doesn't really seem to affect me. That's just who I have to be to get to that level. And I was just watching him going, well, you know what? I'm good. I've got my Twitch stream. I've got a few gigs here and there. I'm happy. I don't need that stuff. I do not need that stuff. It's gonna be a short stream, cause I got back home, uh, like I said, around midnight last night. Then this morning I got up and I've just been sorting out stuff all day and I had a big meeting about uh, 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 the Twitch stream, basically. Like what's gonna happen, talking to the people I'm gonna work with and uh, we're gonna see what happens. So I've basically been out all day. I haven't relaxed yet since I've had that week of work. And tomorrow I'm going back to Aarhus to do a gig. No, I'm got this whole managing my stress thing. I just I'm really bad at this aren't I? <laughs> I just love performing. It's not a problem. I there are people out there with real problems It's just I'm really bad at not stressing out especially when you see someone who like Russell uh, God damn it that guy gives me a lot of pressure and inspiration in a good way and in a bad way <laughs> I'm used to being when I do stand up in danger, I'm like, I got this. I'm good. I know what I'm doing. And then you see him and you're like, I don't know how to write a joke. A big scooter has followed. Scooter big has followed. It sounds like you're not all there mentally. It's like working when I worked in a kindergarten and some kid would come up. My dad has a red car and it's a big car. That's you choosing your Twitch name. I shouldn't really roast you for a bad name. I, when I was a kid, like when I was 14 and I had to choose an email, I chose the email Dementor at ophia.dk. Because <laughs> that was, they're like, those are the bad guys in Harry Potter. Imagine if I kept that email today. And imagine if I was just top working together with some huge guys and they were like, So, Simon, you're uh, opening for Russell in some amazing cities and we're thinking about getting you on this huge. Uh, comedy festival so which i'm gonna mail you all the info which email do you have dementor at or you can use my other me mail scooterbig at gmail.com and they'd be like Shh, we i'm sorry the, the festival's full and we found another opener thank you so much for the people by the way uh, uh coming in to the stream on monday with russell it was so amazing man russell howard on twitch and i showed him the setup I showed him the setup and he was just blown away because he's not a nerdy guy. He's never played video games. Like he's good at football. He's f***ing, he's got like the cool kid. Thank God he's got that lazy eye and he looks like a poodle. That's, uh, otherwise he couldn't, there's no way that guy could have been a comedian. 
but he was like kind of blown away by it. okay so come in and i just showed him this is what i've had set up and i showed him the stream deck you know going back and forth between all this super professional got all these amazing this soundboard all this stuff i can do let me let me just show you guys like this is him in i think october like this is manchester arena this is a 14,000 seater Oh, 16,000. A 16,000 16 seater he did. And he did 22 arenas in 24 days. And then he did Celebrity Masterchef tapings right after that. And his shows, his, his shows are intense. So he went from that, from doing this arena, to his fucking, ladies and gentlemen, Russell Howard, blah, blah, blah. Just everyone going crazy. Holy shit, it's Russell. Let's get it, Russell. And then he went to this so this is my studio and this there's a twitch stream people are saying so what are you gonna have for dinner tonight you got ordering ramen and he was envious of me because he was like wow you're gonna like he's gonna be screwed by the coronavirus and uh i could just sit in this bunker and play video games <laughs> he's a he's a great guy i've launched my tour simon talbot.dk danish invasion check out that bald f God, you're bald and ugly. Check that out. Ooh, I'm in Game of Thrones. No, you tell dick jokes, you loser. That's how we all feel about ourselves, don't we? When we watch vid <laughs> videos. Ah, a bit about the press here. Look how happy I am. Ugly f***er. Yeah. It's like my dad at the speech at my wedding. He was like, can't believe she's with you. You're not good looking, Simon. As a matter of fact, he's f***ing ugly. That was my dad. Is it gonna be Danish when you perform in Denmark or is it gonna be English as well? It's gonna be English. We go to the menu here. Oh, we've got the Twitch side, of course. Oh, <gasps> look at all this stuff. Wee, hey, it's me on Twitch, on Twitch, on Twitch. Twitch, on Twitch, on Twitch. Twitchception. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> so, let me show you what happened since last time. Look. I made some family merch and there's no delivery costs usually on every other site there's always delivery costs but I made sure that you can just order one and you don't have to pay for delivery and it's proper it's good merch check it out I've got it on right now woohoo my life is shit shirt we've got that family mug the Danish invasion poster and look at this it's embroidered isn't that amazing look and it's pretty, it's good quality, like it's really nice. But it, it maybe it feels a little weird to, like I've got my own merch on, right? Like who do I think I am? I'm not gonna wear my own hoodie. What kind of a weird person am I? I don't know. Better take that off. There we go, much better. You see the difference? Much better. And we've got the caps there. Embroidered. Embroidered again. Pretty cool, and I might add more stuff if there's something you want, but we'll see how this thing goes. And I'll probably sell it after the show's on the tour or something, say hi to people. Don't know, we'll see what happens. Hoygor 1991 says something in green maybe. Well, the only thing that's green is all the fat stacks coming my way. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Fucking gunshots, man.